Welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 37, Being Under-Challenged. Hey, smart humans. Welcome to this 37th episode. Can you believe it? And today we're talking about a smart people problem that may sound a bit like a nice to have, right? Being under challenge. But a life without any true challenges gets boring very quickly. And if you've listened to the episode on bore out, then you know how bad that is for your well-being and your health. And I think a perfect illustration of this is Marvin the paranoid android from the fabulous Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which, by the way, you must read if you haven't yet. Now, Marvin is utterly depressed because he has this massive brain the size of the universe, and basically all he's asked to do is to open and close doors. (laughs) You get the picture, right? And like Marvin... Most smart people I meet are chronically under-challenged. They are under-challenged at school. They're under-challenged at university. They're under-challenged at work. And they're pretty much under-challenged at life. Okay. You may now be thinking, what uh, does it mean to be under-challenged? What if you're like not doing scary things all the time, and that's fine. What if you're quite comfortable with your life? Thanks very much. Well, of course, you get to decide. But here's my definition. You're under challenged if you don't grow over a longer period of time. And of course, we're not talking physical growth there, although that could be a goal, right? But If you don't grow in specific areas of your life over a longer period of time, you are probably under challenged. That's it. That's the simple version anyhow. But let's get a little bit more specific. We're going to look at comfort zones versus growth zones versus terror zones, right? You've probably heard about the importance of going outside your comfort zone so you can grow. Well, that is basically what this this is all about. And I wish I could now hold up a picture for you to look at. But as this is a podcast, I will have to sketch it for you. And of course, I'll include it in in the show notes. I want you to imagine a large rectangle, right? Like like a piece of paper with inside it a circle and within that circle, another smaller circle. Now, inside that smaller circle, imagine a happy, content face. Got it? Okay, that is your comfort zone. That's all the things you can do without massive stress, which, by the way, doesn't mean they're all easy or fun. Okay, it's just they don't make you freak out, right? There are things you can do on autopilot. They don't scare your brain. And generally, this is a lovely place to be. And actually, some of the overachievers listening to this could probably benefit from spending a bit more time here. But being in your comfort zone most of the time tends to lead to massive dissatisfaction. It's fascinating, right? You think, oh, just being comfortable all the time will solve all my problems. It will not my friend. And I think this is because we as humans, and I think especially us smart, curious humans, have this innate desire or even a need to evolve, to constantly grow, right? So in addition to spending time in your comfort zone, which is important, right, to have like a a stable, balanced life, you also want to spend time outside your comfort zone in your growth zone. That is the circle outside your comfort zone. And this is where you do the stuff that is challenging. 
things that don't come easy or naturally to you with your smart mind, including stuff that you can't bypass with your thinking, like learning a craft or a martial art, for example. So going back to the visual, we have these two circles, right, sitting in a rectangle. And the rectangle is there for a reason. It's not just there to provide a nice frame because there is a third space available to you outside your growth zone even. And most people don't realize this. But if you make challenges so big, so massive that they terrify you, that they activate your fight, freeze, flight response, then you've actually moved outside your growth zone into the terror zone. Yes, the terror zone. Got Halloween coming up, so it's very fitting, right? And this is the zone where you try and do stuff whilst being terrified, massively anxious, right? All the things. And your body is like constantly alert, activated, etc. This is not a very productive or fun place to be. Yet, again, I think a very familiar place for the overachievers amongst us. And if you keep setting massive goals, because this is what you've been told to do, right? Set big, big, audacious goals, and then find that you're doing nothing at all about your goals, then you're probably catapulting yourself straight into your terror zone and the paralysis that tends to come with it, which is good to know, right? And in that case, you may want to adjust your goal or break it up in smaller bits. So that you land into the growth zone again and you can actually get to work in pursuing it. Now, of course, this is, as always, a very simplified picture because these zones are different for different areas of your life, right? So if you're able to right now, if you're not walking or driving, um, this would be a good time to get out a piece of paper and some colored pens or crayons and draw a couple of versions of our original picture, the rectangle with the circles. You can give them different colors and name them for different aspects of your life because we want to look at all the different dimensions. For example, relationships, money, career, fun and entertainment, love and romance, learning, health and fitness, spirituality, contribution, etc., etc. Right? And again, in the show notes, I have got a done-for-you version of this, but you may find it fun to do your own. Now, what you can do is look at all these different areas, these different dimensions of your life, and simply ask yourself, am I mostly comfortable in this one arena? Do I actually spend some time growing, or am I terrorizing myself? Right, And do that for all the different ones. And once you know, what do you think about that? Does that... Are you like, that's fine. I like that. That's where I want to be. Then you know, you have no work to do there. And if you're like, okay, this is probably where I want to move outside of the terror zone, then that's what you've got to do. And in some arenas of your life, you may actually want to direct yourself into the growth zone. I'll give you an example. For me, when I look at my kind of relationship with social zone, I have been a bit complacent. COVID help me justify my natural proclivity for social isolation. I'm very good at being alone. I really enjoy it, which means I haven't been out much or made many friends over the past couple of years. I have been sitting in my comfort zone and that was fine for a while. But right now it is time for me to get into my growth zone again, to go out, meet new people, right? So I've been signing up for activities to do exactly that, which by the way, totally freaks me out, but not enough to get me in my terror zone. But it, it's not easy, right, for an autistic, sort of shy, um, antisocial human. But so far, it's it's been fun and interesting. Then when I look at, for example, my business, I actually spend a lot of time in the growth zone. I keep learning new things, studying new things, building new stuff. Um, I'm constantly developing, challenging myself. So I'm I'm definitely not under challenge there. I, there's probably no need for adjustment because I don't feel terrorized either. So that's kind of how this works. And you can do a similar inventory of different areas of your life to get an idea of where you are under challenged and where you would like to grow, right? But before I give you more specific advice on that, let's first look at two coping strategies that smart people use when they're under 
challenge, right? Because you may be doing one of these two things and that is definitely something you want to be aware of and to stop doing. So the first group is basically trying to keep it interesting by doing things in less time. So kind of winging it, they're checking out in a way, they're only doing the minimum required. They're doing less so they get to spend more time doing other things like staring at the window, looking at clouds, maybe watching Netflix, right? All the things. Because they've noticed um, that even if they do very little, people will still love whatever it is they achieve. They'll still get applause. So basically, they start underachieving. And the second strategy is doing the opposite. They're trying to fix the boredom by doing more, by, by stacking tasks, right? Okay, so you fall into the first category if you've noticed that you usually get away with doing the minimum amount of work required and still receive praise for, for example, that presentation you hashed together at the last minute, the paper you crammed for an all, like you you crammed together an all-nighter, or the client proposal that you drafted whilst, for example, watching Netflix, right? Not only do you get away with it, you even get appreciation. It's astonishing. And this can create a massive disconnect between you and your environment, whether it's at school, university, or work. And for some people, this can actually result in habitual slacking, a kind of race to the bottom. How little can I do and still get away with? So here, being under challenge results in you completely underperforming as well. And the other group, they keep it interesting by doing more things in the same amount of time. It's actually the opposite. They, they try to fix their being under challenged by cramming more things into the time they have. They take on extra duties, positions, they volunteer, right? They help colleagues with projects. They care for cats at the local shelter. They bake brownies for that school thing, which again, all very nice, but just like the slacking strategy, it does not solve the problem of being under challenged in itself, right? You're just creating a kind of external pressure. It keeps you occupied. It keeps you exhausted enough. So maybe you don't notice that you are actually bored. And it does increase the risk of adding burnout to your impending bore out. So whichever camp you're in, slacking to the bottom or taking on more and more and more, neither extreme works, right? These are not great coping strategies. They never solve the problem of being under-challenged. Okay, so what does? Well, you have to solve it yourself. This is the responsibility that comes with the gift of having a smart mind. Because the odds that someone else is going to create those challenges for you are pretty low. And if you have met that amazing teacher, mentor, or manager that helped you grow, congratulations. Be incredibly grateful and try to do the same for your smart peers if you can. Okay? But you need to take responsibility for being under-challenged and you need to start thinking about how you can change it. Now, a quick note for those of you who have gifted children, they will probably need your help in creating challenges for their smart mind. And I'll talk more about that in later episodes for parents of smart kids. Yes, they are coming. Okay, so how do you challenge your smart mind? Well, as said before, it is not trying to cram more of the same into less time. It also isn't deciding to climb Mount Everest if you've never walked up a mountain in your life. That is just madness, right? And it will land you straight in the terror zone. And in this example, probably also just get you killed. <laughs> right? So the challenge lies in the beautiful, messy middle of nudging yourself towards doing something that feels pretty uncomfortable, but doesn't completely freak you out. And to help you do this, you want to figure out the borders of your comfort zone. And you can easily do this by using your emotions as a kind of comfort gauge. I think this is much better than trying to think your way into this. Um, your body, your, your feelings know much better. So I want you to think about something you're currently doing that causes you zero stress. That lands you in the green, right? On the comfort gauge. For example, I don't know, hanging up the laundry, um, writing a post for social media, if that doesn't freak you out, all the things, right? Now think of something in the same arena that terrifies you, that would send you straight to the red on your comfort gauge. For example, maybe managing your current projects at work 
is a little bit stressful because of time constraint and the political landscape, but in itself, it doesn't really challenge you. You're in the green. Now, imagine doing something pretty radical, like quitting your job or going straight to the CEO and proposing a complete overhaul of all systems and processes. That could send you to the red, your terror zone. And basically, you want to find something in between. This could be a project at work that requires you to learn new skills and take risks you usually avoid. Or it could be a side hustle or a new hobby that you can't simply hack your way into with your smart mind. Because most smart humans quickly figure out what is required of them to be successful in a certain situations and how to easily fulfill those requirements. So you want to create a situation where either the requirements are vague or you can't easily fulfill them or both which, by the way, reminds me of my master coach training, where our instructors were intentionally very vague about requirements, which caused several of my peers to have massive freakouts, right? Because if you don't know what you're going to be graded on, you just have to be pretty fucking awesome, believe that you are, right? Step into your own authority. So can you do that? That is like such a massive path for growth. As for requirements that aren't easily fulfilled or bypassed by a fast brain, this is where you can also consider activities or sports that simply take a lot of practice, which, by the way, will also (laughs) teach you a lot of resilience and perseverance and grit. For example, learning to play a musical instrument, uh, a new martial art, anything basically with sports, there is a reason so many smart people run marathons, I think. It's not just the endorphins. Um, Visual arts, all the things, right? You can't hack your way to playing Bach's cello suites. You will have to put in the work. You'll have to put in lots of practice. So you want to commit to doing something that is going to leave you frustrated, stretched, challenged, and ultimately extremely proud and fulfilled. Right? So it's got to be something you actually want to do. <laughs> that is eventually going to make you feel happy. And on a day-to-day basis, this, these can be like challenging puzzles, personal encounters, practices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in the longer term, you can think about major projects like building a business, writing a book, making a fun new career move, all the things. And the good news is the more you practice this, like going out of your comfort zone, the easier it gets just like the running, drawing, playing the piano. Not just because you get the fun dopamine hits of all the small improvements, although those are very nice too. Thank you very much. Um, It's because you build this resilience I mentioned earlier. You learn to move through failure, discomfort, all the things that come with being outside your comfort zone. And as a bonus, you will start to feel incredibly alive and fulfilled. How's that? pretty good, right? Okay, so how do you go about this? First, do an honest inventory. Look at all those different areas of your life we talked about, right, that are on the sheet. Where are you currently not being challenged enough, right? Where do you need to grow? And then get ready for the part two, the fun part. You start designing your own challenges. You can turn it into a game where you get to level up if that helps. That helps me massively, by the way. So, for example, how can you grow when it comes to your relationships? Where can you grow in the way you spend your free time? What would be a fun challenge there? Do you maybe need a money challenge? Um, Is your brain very underused and does it need some extremely hard math puzzles or problems to make it come alive? What about your body? Are you challenging yourself enough there? Although here, again, for the overachievers, I'd like to stress to always challenge your body with kindness, right? What would be fun when it comes to fitness? Would you like to be able to do cartwheels, run 10K, cut through blocks with your bare hands, right? You get to decide. It's so fun. So look at the different circles, the different arenas. Spend some time dreaming up all the ways in which you can start challenging yourself. And remember, you don't want to be in a red zone. You want to be in the orange stretch zone. And then... To prevent overwhelm, simply pick one to start with. Pick the one that calls to you, the one that feels irresistible, and accept the challenge. Commit. Don't give up until it's done. And if you need some help setting a clear-cut challenge, then check out the 
earlier episodes on goal setting, right? Do it, achieve it, and then notice how you feel. Much better, right? Because your smart mind deserves to be stretched and challenged, and so do you. So give it what it needs. (laughs) I'm wishing you a week in which you get to stretch yourself in the best possible way. Until next week. Bye-bye. Do you want to learn how to build a life in which you are stretched in the best possible way? Then you want to work with me. DM me on LinkedIn, Instagram or Facebook to learn how. Or send me an email to coaching at elsacramer.com.